Hello and welcome all. This is Dice of Ages presenting Cres Valen, The Argent Flame, episode 46, The Caladoran Code. I'm your not so humble dungeon master TJ, and without further ado, let's get into the recap of the previous episode. Now separate from the saltpeter shippers and able to move with more agility, the party follow Ermgrim down a chute back to the border of the Underdark. The Duragar states that surprise might serve in his favor for when he returns to Grimdramar, deciding not to send word ahead, while notifying the gang of the nature of Steercrag. Cole hides his bean while Eliezer prays to his deity, endowing him with a sparkling, shiny nature for the day. Pinjack adopts the persona of Grey Glove Silvervane to the chagrin of the party, as the group of the adventurers agree to adopt the moniker the Arcane Conundrum. Not long after, the troop finally arrive at Steercrag, a city of hardened peoples and hunters built on an immense cavern that connects to other districts via radiating tunnels, lit by large glowworms that hang from the dome, and the first line of defense from the nearby reaching breach. The group decide to find a tavern in order to set up a base of operations for information gathering. While traveling the streets of the city, the band speak and learn of the political and clan friction, as well as trials, oration, and canvassing for support. The party learn from Melinda, a young human girl, handing out Vogel-marked bread of the Quarry's Calm, also called the Whispering Wall, on account of the thin walls good for eavesdropping, and leads them there. Within, Log makes a backroom deal with the Dwarf, that's Dwarf and Orc, proprietor. Bilgrar and sweet rooms are acquired, as well as a wealth of alcohol. Bilgrar agrees to be a wallflower for dirt on Clan Stoneworm, Vogel, Herak, and Mortanic, while Argus receives a cryptic divination from Kosuth. Now, let's get back to the action. Welcome back to Crest, Valen. Hello, and welcome back, all. Dice of, this is Dice of Ages, presenting Crest Valen. We did it. You got it right this time. Um, great. Uh, um, pick up from where we left off. Uh, some uh, regulated substances, or non-regulated substances, <laughs> just say, were Control uh, substances. controlled yeah. substances were exchanged. Um, from an ex narc. Some, <laughs> some, some, uh, pursue, pursuant endeavors of trying to find a trail of uh, pin jacks, uh, pin ships, I guess, there, with the of Elastray and Halloran and Smooth Hands, and then a very special divination involving a toe whiskey, Lord and Toe whiskey. Incense and a, and, a, and a scorching hot pot belly stove of smoke give a very cryptic, extensive vision. Somewhat poetic, if I can say it for myself. Divining. Uh, Phrase? I don't want to call it paragraph. Whatever. I don't know. I'm running out of words. It's definitely a paragraph. <laughs> Maybe two. Divine revelation. Yeah. Full on prophecy. For just a week. <laughs> it's definitely a short phrase. <laughs> it's a cryptic. That's a good short phrase. <laughs> Dubs just text. Says I think I know what's going on. Um, he's trying to help. Yeah, yeah, no, he's, he's, he does, he's, he's trying to help. Okay, cool. So, divination, that's what you get. And, and you see, like, it's, it's not like a face, but as the smoke keeps moving, it doesn't stay stationary, it just kind of like flows along the negative space, like the gestalt space of where, not necessarily a face, but just some sort of bodied voice just does, and it just undulates and moves as though you can't give a definition. But you see that there's something there among the flickering, um, hot distortions of the flames and and the smoke, which the rest of you are now very keenly aware that is threatening to start a fire within this place. Um, as the legs of the potbelly stove are glowing red hot now, and like char is starting to form, <laughs> three little flames and on three of the four legs start to kick up of small little flames as it starts to, you know, 
burn the wood of the floor of this room. Take a pitcher of water that's usually there for the bathing, right? For taverns and uh, just... Yeah, there's the wash basin, yeah. especially in the suite. So this is a suite. Um, it's actually a two-part suite. So you guys have an adjoining wall of which you have a door that locks between the two of you. So you can go back and forth and talk to each other if you'd like, but you can also be separate from each other. And each suite has two, and I mean two, double beds. So there's Fancy. enough for everybody to sleep who sleeps. Uh, and there's uh, a nice, and then each room also has a, uh, a, you know, not great, but decent, like, love seat. So someone could sleep on that, especially uh, those of the uh, smaller persuasion. <laughs> I'll take the couch. So, so you could essentially have one, two, three. Yep. Spots for ten people to sleep. There's okay. a dozen of us, but Pernua doesn't need to sleep, and I counted the... And neither does Conk. The, yeah, familiars in there, so... Yeah. Yeah. The familiars don't need to sleep either. They can hang out. They could. I still it's imagine, like, a little, be. like, oh. anime chibi, like, Adventures of Twig and, and Shikar, like, <laughs> at night when this is happening. Shikar just, like, uh, just roaming through the hotel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do we need to make a one-shot of the adventures of... Uh, we the might adventures need to. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, I think uh, Group of Roll just came out with one, yeah. with, like, the sprinkle and everything. Yeah. I, I think the reason, the one and only reason I'm going to watch that is because Travis voice is sprinkle. <laughs> because he has for the entire... Show me. Show me now. <laughs> like, I love it so much. Um, so, Yes. I, I, okay, so I see as I see the camera panning of just starting in on a tree and just a branch that comes out and then Shakar lands on it and then popping out of the top head feathers of Shakar, just twig. And Shakar yep. lifts up and twig goes, mm. and yep. just spreads over his head. Exactly. I'm very excited about it. Yep. <laughs> I'm like thinking a theme similar to like a combination between Hilda and Centaur World. Yep, somewhere, yep, right around there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got it. We've got it. Ready? Ready? Print it. Let's, Let's go. go. Someone write a script. <laughs> Someone get the animators on this. Okay. Cool. Um, so yeah, you guys have these two suites to yourself. Um, uh, the locks here are not keys. They are these this <clears throat> type of um, unless you are in, you cannot open the door. Like inside, and you cannot open the door. Uh, it is more of uh, a little stone slab that has um, certain grooves, not like a key, but has uh, kind of like a mound curve and then a larger curve. And all it does is like move things up of a, think of a piece of a roll of duct tape that's wrapped around one bar that's on the other side of the door. And, but it's made of metal. And so, when unless it's lifted the door won't open so this little thing goes in there and lifts it to just the right thing and then the door opens so it's like it's an ingenious other type of like rather than convoluted locksmith picking thing so which is actually a lot harder to pick because you either have to have this thing or be on the other side to do it um but yeah and you can uh, communicate with each other on either sides so you have nice big suites here um, suites aren't like, so I'd say the suites are about the size of this basement here. Not too big, um, but enough where you guys can put a dome in if you want, if you want to. It's cozy, you got rooms. Rather than being stuck in a tunnel. Mm -hmm. The lack of daylight still is great, but... <laughs> Machete picks up a water bucket. What's your problem? It's not me, my sister's doing it. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> How'd she even get here? I, I, I think I think you were having a dream about you know the baker's dozen for a second. <laughs> Obviously, Trishani and Machini are quantumly entangled. <laughs> <laughs> what one does, so does the yeah. <laughs> Ironically, I'm sure that actually is happening on that ship right now. <laughs> oh, Look at right. Actually, probably yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you watch the baker's dozen, don't you? Yeah. I do. Anyway, anyway, are we on the same yeah. day? Mm -mm. No, they're ahead of you. They're yeah, they're like in the thirty first. Well, yeah. it's good because we were ahead of them for a long they can't play as time. As we can, yeah. so. mm. especially since uh, Sean's a music camp right now. He's teaching music, yeah, which is good, but good for him. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um. 
Well, I, you know, we can't have it go elsewhere. It has to be contained. I, it, I don't, don't look at me like that. I'm sorry. Don't look at me like. I'm sorry. I, we can't, I can't let the place down, right? I mean, that's. We said we want to do fuck up the stuff here. I'm just doing it in. Outside of the All right, I'm going to go into the other room. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the evening is yours. The afternoon is yours. Um, my intent was to originally come up here and work on transcribing the scroll haste into my spell book. Oh, how many hours does that take? Six hours. So, okay, so it's going to take the rest of the night. Yeah. But I don't know if you may have enhance ability or want to give it to me after me doing that. You spent your fourth level on... It's a ritual spell. I got you before you go upstairs. <laughs> okay. Such a powerful ritual spell. It just requires the the the, the, the I mean, it's twenty five, which is only like twenty five gold. It's so I'm gonna have to do so much. You rose. You have to do it right because it's only within seven days, and it's only like you have to. It can be extremely cryptic. It, you don't have to like. Yeah. Okay, so there's a leeway. There's a lot I you like can it, mess though, with it. I gotta say. As long because it gives me a lot of fun to be like, okay, let's see how well you, you're like. gonna give little hidden nuggets of information yeah. because of which is I kind of want to do that. Yeah, <laughs> it's just I'm pretty sure I'm like, okay, TJ, come up with pros on the spot for a question that you had no idea was coming. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you you I always have to catch yourself from dropping little kernels to us anyway. Yeah. So some sometimes I do. Often, <laughs> so yeah, so I'll be working on that for okay. the rest of the evening. So, if you need me to do the arcana, yes, check. um, are you giving her enhanced ability? I, I got it. okay, cool, I'll give you guidance. Oh, thank you for that. Thank I will you. say that for you guys, well, no, I guess you just cast it. Peace, here you go. Mm -hmm. Bye. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> As they were heading upstairs. upstairs, folks, you dwarf. Okay, that's 24, which... Oh, that for that's, sure. Clears. Yeah, totally fine. Great, so you get you have haste. Oh my gosh. It's Are in you? your books. doesn't mean it's prepared today. No, no, but it is in the book. Yeah. How many other scrolls do you need to get in your book? Too nasty. many. <laughs> nasty I have huge, not enough actually. paper. If she, hastes, if she hastes you, you can take three attacks in one turn. And your AC increases by two, and your movement speed doubles. TJ, you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're we're like... in trouble because now TJ has to account for that. I know. Yeah, I know. Haste is good. <laughs> good but, voice. but when haste official. drops, you lose your turn. For for That's a start, but if you get it for a minute, so like bucks. But she just can't <laughs> lose her concentration. Yeah. So. Um, and the haste is most efficacious on martial classes, mm -hmm. yeah. unless there are classes that can cast spells with sources, like and attack. The, the, the Which the so like likely yourself. it's going to be yeah the two of us. Uh, yeah. Wait wait wait. Two of you. But I can the also two... make scrolls for you and. The, great, you know the, the two who hasted could also do the most damage. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know how that would work because I have to order him <laughs> to take an action. You're just clear to so, Right, uh, but you no, get, but you I can do a lot of damage. Spell yeah, gets another action. What I mean is, like, I have to burn my bonus yeah, action to make it for a long time. So, could I yeah. make him take yeah. two actions? Which is why I want to go in the circle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Put it on there. Yeah, I think, I think that would be, I don't see why you wouldn't be able I mean, to say, the reason, hey, like, bonus action, punch it on You should use all of your actions. Yeah, you should be able to just do that in one. Punch him as much as you can. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Making a so, fun. Yeah. fun way to use Wall of Flame. Otherwise, haste wouldn't affect him at all. To cool. make us some live terror. That would be such a nerf to him. I don't want nice. Because... Yeah. He's about to get stronger, isn't he? No. At ninth level, I get a thing where my attacks start doing force damage. And that also does his attacks. But he doesn't actually, like... Level up until level 15. But his hit points go up. Not until 15. Uh, as as there's my do. levels go yeah. up. Yeah. He, he only gets like five per level. So. He's still another chunky 
pizza hit. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's not we, but definitely like it later definitely on, he's going to be back that we He's going to be squishy. He's right going to be here. as low on hit points as she is after we get a certain distance. Oh, levels. really? Yeah. If he only gets five per level. Mm. I guess you got to do some modifications. <clears throat> Give him solar uh, adamantine <clears throat> armor. Yeah, we just got to do it. doesn't with, uh... take damage from mundane things that aren't adamantine or magic. My god. <laughs> <laughs> you can still get a, have, uh, get a hold of Grow Group, right? <laughs> yeah, I can. <laughs> All right. So you're doing space for six, be hours. Hard to six get hours. hours. Yeah. The evening is yours, my dudes. I'm going to go back downstairs. Sendak, I've been having the thought. Oh yeah, how we can use wall of fire to make some live terrazine. We could set up a fire barrier and burn enough in and do a top and bottom heat to basically prep live terrazine. What about the downward spread? Well, if we have it on a bonfire or something first. Hasn't it just turned to ash though when we've actually like it turns burned to it. No, it doesn't. It goes away. When we burn it away, when we've like fought it off and burn it away, we've just burn it to ash essentially. It has to grow into you a certain like disintegrate it. With, yeah, with like, with fire. Yeah, what happens is it, it turns to spent terrazine once it doesn't, once its potence, once it spreads so much that it doesn't have enough to grow any further. It stops growing. Okay, or, or like think of it like a, a radioactive half life. It might still be growing, but infinitesimally and, and exponentially slow, slow, slow to the molecular level. That's that's spent. But if it has no more, the, one way to do it. It's not a bad idea. The problem is like you put it on something and you have a big enough circle that it can grow in the middle, but you contain it. The only problem is it's it. also growing down. Through whatever. Right. Yeah, through whatever we set it on. Right, which is why like the whole room needs to be contained in something. Yeah. Like you guys know, from both being in Fulmore bed, that there are chambers that were they create spent terrazine, uh, and of which the person to do so it to help that that's really good at it. The one that wardens most of that is the keeper of the black flame because they yeah. just make flame appear. Because so, she just makes flame appear, and the whole room is like encased. Yeah. In like already spent terzine and like adamantine walls yeah. that like prevent it in all dimensions from like going so. So like, if we were using, we could contain it, and it would only it. spread to what we wanted to spread to. We could get that amount of spent terzine. So if we mined some of the places we've had spent terzine to make a structure on, it might help. Like the tomb that yep. if his name was in, if that wall content counts as enough. Is a high enough content of spent terrazine in the, the stone part of it doesn't catch. Not that I have any use for it. It's not a bad idea. I can use some more of it if we can get our hands on it. So we might be able to put some souls into things too. Yeah. The terrazine put the ball. They know how to prevent it. We have a fun one. Is um, Ernbrim in it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, he was helping. If you know, uh, if you find Terezin undisturbed in its natural state, it can keep its potency without growing. Naturally growing Terezin in, like, you know... Where does it naturally grow? Veins? Well, there's a big... Well, not vein. It's more of like a crystallized low reference word. But yeah, it's... The same way crystals grow over years and years and years, but this is one is its origins. We're not entirely quite sure of, but there is a massive collection of it in uh, like a geode of sorts beneath Rimbrum. Um, think of it like: Have you ever had a canteen full of water on a very, very, very cold day, um, and you left it on your cart and you didn't move your cart for a while, and it was still liquid? But then once you pick it up, it freezes solid. Because you disturb the water. Think of it more like that. As soon as the Molecular it's disturbed, change. it activates. Which then begs the question: Does potent terazine is there a statute of limitations for how long it needs to 
be still for it to become dormant, not re not reactive. But granted, I'm not a scientist by any stretch of the imagination, so I don't so know as much about it. Saying there's a middle ground between active therazine and spent therazine, there's a dormant therazine. Yeah, I wouldn't say like between. It's still straight up as potent as active therazine. It's still the exact same structure. It's just hasn't been disturbed, mind moved, or like. So it just it hasn't had an impetus to react with its surroundings. And if something it's naturally occurring, if something touched it, it would then have something to spread. It to. would, and it would spread. And uh, I mean, there are there are reasons why the the mining efforts are only used by telekinetic magics in order to make sure that it's not disturbed and it's first encased in some sort of bubble or yeah. uh, when it's harvested because. You disturb one piece in that geode, massive swath of the Underdark could be just... Disappears. Uh, disappeared. Turned Consumed. Into, right. There well, is. Yes. That's including all of the denizens. So, it's highly regulated. Of course, we have safeguards. Alright, what's our next move? I got a fun prophecy. You'll have to tell me about it. We uh, might have found a link to <laughs> yeah. Pinjack's people. I just didn't want to wander off alone. So, All right, let's go. Hold down the fort. Have fun, guys. Bye. <laughs> no way. Okay, you guys drinking? Everybody else coming? You going? We'll go with him. All right, you guys are gonna try to track down um, a, a, a local faction. You guys coming with? We're getting drunk. Yeah, <laughs> you guys stay in here. So they're staying we'll back the drinking. Yeah. We'll leave Pernua back as well to be. Yeah, yeah. and I'm our, just upstairs if something really our wizard alone. Alone. So To be your mom, she'll, she'll drink with you, but the only thing she gets out of it is the taste of the yeah. alcohol. She can't get drunk in her current. Form. She'll be mama bear. She doesn't guys. have a concept. <laughs> she say something. Her liver is undead. Put this way: the last time we left somebody alone, they disappeared for yes. a month or so. She doesn't have an active circle <laughs> system, so she oh, can't yeah. run. Get <laughs> yeah. So, Doc, maybe we should go drink upstairs. I'll put the goggles on. Do detect oh, magic on myself. If anything goes bad. Okay. That way she doesn't do try to see the figure out what the symbols are he was talking about so we can follow him. we, we okay. take the cast and go upstairs. um <laughs> wait cool yeah i mean pranua will drink with you she's like that's her whiskeys off you're tell there's a toe in it be small <laughs> Log and I are moving the drinking party upstairs, though. Okay, cool. Da, da, I guess to keep. Da, 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 so we're not da, all da, tired. Da, totally. Da, hey. Hello. Yeah. Cool. Well, and just in you case. You just, like, see. Um, oh, fuck. What was their name? The bar. Bill Grar. Bill Grar. Bill Grar be like. I'll do thaumaturgy and just make mine go like haywire. Wait, <laughs> well, they aren't your actual eyes, so you would have to do it. I mean, uh, thaumaturgy is just on the form of the illusion anyway, so that's yeah. true. Your eyebrows? Are you making your eyebrows do that? Because you're going to be money? <laughs> but that, 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 that <laughs> would confuse this guy's self to like make him like do a whole like wave. Caterpillar wave. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> This is absolutely insane. Look, look, you have a new act for the show. Are you guys doing anything other than You're just right. getting drunk and like and high and whatever? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, do. try to get the balls going again. Okay, um, cool. While, while, while I'm, yeah, I'm I like, love it. Actually, this is like <laughs> this. This is your method. This is absolutely right, your I'm, I'm getting inspiration yeah. from getting hammered. Like, what? <laughs> it's like, hey, what do you think about floating balls? <laughs> Uh, perfect. Go ahead and roll your. Cole's gonna give him a look and just go. Don't know if I want to see that, log. <laughs> I can float my ball. No, it's gonna yeah. be awesome. Just wait. God, that's not better. 
Watch this. Watch this. Oh no, that's the worst. <laughs> when you hear a drunk person say, "Watch this," hold my beer. Yeah. I just like quietly shut the door, trying to like. <laughs> Go into the other screen. Yeah. The other screen. I'm just like God. <laughs> just for yes. That, so the difference between logs process and your process <laughs> is drastic. <laughs> Perfect. Right. Let's go with Phoenix. I've only got a nine. A nine. Um, yeah. See, being drunk didn't really. Help. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so what happened was uh, um, you. I was too focused on the eyebrow thing. <laughs> and you've had a bit of drugs. You know, just put. You said you like grabbed Twig and like squished them like clay into like a ball. Because they're kind of made of ichor, right? So you kind of squish them in the ball, and Twig's like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> and uh, put them like it's kind of like this, except it goes. And it that's it's all... what the priest was doing, and the the, the thing, mm-hmm. the the ravens, people, the you know what I'm saying. Look like this, but... and I do my meteor one just so that way he's got mine just kind of because that, that oh, puts my the, mal- melts my new meteor yeah because yeah, that cool. puts meteors around my head like that yeah. no but, but dark so like, log dark. tries to mimic you but all he does is just take twig and just <laughs> <laughs> that's the extent of what you do during that time it's just just this and then i shut that down <laughs> um more dark cool <laughs> um I would actually, though, while I'm drinking, I'm going to be drinking while I'm, like, studying the good berry that I was given this morning and trying to take inspiration from it. You got it. Got it. Um, uh, go ahead and roll a nature check. This one was because we decided on alchemy, but you need someone who knows what they're doing with alchemy. Yeah. None of us do. Well, I need to reach that point. <laughs> Zendek yeah. has the potential, too. Well, I need to know. I need to figure out what I'm doing with it first, kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, Fifteen. Fifteen. Um, you're understanding the basics, inter, inter, intertwined connectedness of its actual juices and them being innately magical, and the fact that there's oh shit, it's not just magic in this. It is magic, but it's also the actual chemical composition of this magical molecular juices. bonds or whatever it is in this berry has the capacity to carry this and it is a catalyst for this magic there's a reason why this works and you're realizing that it's not just magic it's two parts system they're working in uh, uh tandem okay. cool cool great so you guys are hunting down the faction mm-hmm. um um i pinjack i assume takes point on this because he is the one that knows most what to look for um, uh, unless you want to <laughs> take point, or try, you're trying to lift yourself, yeah. Just to have to, to take don't get it. I'm gonna try and do it. Okay. I just don't know. Cool. Um, he can just kind of tell you what it is. But, um, so we're looking for um, iconography that is either indicative of Calderan, Elastrae, or or um, collections of people looking. For a safe haven. Pinjack, is there a code word or anything? Um, well, if if you, uh, um, the, the the followers of Illustrate, he'd really like to mention people can dance in the moonlight. So that's that's kind of like a not necessarily a call sign or a code word, but that's uh, uh, if you hear that mentioned in conversation, that's good. Some like, oh, 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 okay, that's uh, we might be in the right direction. Because I can look out for people saying that. Well, oh yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Like, yeah, you have, you have good lips. ears. I can read lips. Yeah. Yeah. Don't talk and just mouth it. Okay, and then I would repeat back what he said to him. I don't know. I can't read lips. Argus can. Even though you like to put me in the campaign, it doesn't mean I'm actually there. Okay, or, or uh, anyway. Um, so, yeah, okay. You want to keep an eye out for that? Sure. Uh, I'll just say roll a perception check, and you can roll a perception check as well. I'm going to say at advantage if you're looking for certain magic. Because magic. Is this perception or investigation? 
Um, this is perception because this is about noticing. Investigating is like sorting through something and, and like um, pouring over records or, or sifting through people's pockets or like that kind of thing. I rolled a two. Two. So a six. <laughs> what is. He is proficient in perception. He's pr- no. proficient in natural words. <laughs> Was this an advantage? No. It's supposed to be an advantage? No, he no, was no. Oh, okay. 18. Okay. That was on your black dice, too. So basically, you're telling me that dice sucks. No. <laughs> I didn't get to have the Will Wheaton cooked. Dice? We need no. you to DM some sessions. <laughs> I like warm those up for you. Maybe I like put them in my roost. It, it doesn't matter because there are times where I can like. All right. They control the net. 20 and 19. Okay, cool. There's a couple things you know. It doesn't actually matter. As you're heading east, uh, which was the direction that was from your... um, As you're heading east, a couple things you notice. You notice quite a few um, people and gatherings outside, whether the people that are be orating or having arguments or or, uh, giving... uh, uh, trying to convince people to to think a certain way... um, there, you also notice a couple people like closing their shutters now that it's starting to get into the early evening. I'm saying like, oh shit, people are done with the work. They've uh, they're coming back from their hunts. They've had a couple things to drink, and there's a bunch of contention over like what's going on with politics. There's some people that just don't want to be involved with it, and know that it can get kind of rowdy, like some sports fans after a big event in, in their hometown. Um, um, so. Uh, that's one of the, the those are the come some of the big things that you notice. Another big thing you notice is that the fang here, uh, where the vision from the fang here is like you're west of the fang, so you see like the the west side of the fang and it curves away from you. Um, and you see like the uh, the, the thinner side, so it, like it curves away from you. Okay. And you're on not the broader side, but one of the thinner sides, um, and you're headed toward it. And you notice, and this is like super Da Vinci Code style too. You notice like one of the larger glowworms, the massive glowworms that growing from the ceiling, kind of meets up exactly with the t- from where you're standing, like meets up exactly with the tip of the fang, which then makes a triangle with one of like the whole perforations of the other um, uh, tunnels that go into the other it, it, into another chamber and then an equidistant from those three points is what looks like a hole that would be a cog if you squint and turn your face could be a what? like cog. a shape of a cog oh C O G. Thank you, Cozy. Is that is the cog one of the smooth yeah, hands? Yeah, Caloran smooth hands and Don have a share a similar like following with that okay. kind of stuff. They're still both techies. This Caloran is is a little bit more of like the whereas Gon's just like tick 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 and Caloran's more like ah, yes get into the moves yeah of the gear know the gear love the gear and they're like it's more of like the innate. Think of like um, the difference between a clockmaker and a pottery person. The beauty in mechanics, yeah. as opposed to just the yeah. mechanics. Yeah. Granted, Utilities. there's beauty in, in just the mechanics and mechanics too. But yeah, so yeah, it's very objective. I mean. But yeah, the utility of like mechanics doing the work over like making it look intricate, mm. artistic. Mm. They're, they're, they are, I wouldn't even say the two sides of the same coin. They are, they share a great kinship yeah. between there. Very, very similar. Just one is less. Similar. Does Smooth Hands have anything to do with, no, it's gnomes. There aren't really like dark gnomes, so that doesn't make sense. I mean, there, there are, are gnomes. there are, There's dark um, especially if no. like, there are those stories of gnomes that have, similar to the pale, what what right. what are known as Durgar, like the pale dwarves, the great dwarves, um, there are those deep gnomes, gnomes, like deep gnomes, okay. that are similar, similar, technically you're a deep gnome as well, um, you're not a hill gnome, um, rock gnome. Rock gnome. You're a rock gnome. Like so, there are deep gnomes that definitely find their way down there. Some 
Um, there, you do know of deep gnomes, like of stories of that. A lot of them are really enjoy their hermitage, okay. uh, and you know, like the whole mushroom and underdark and down in there, and they're more loners or smaller communities. Um, they are a bit isolationist, and they can be a bit persnickety and just crotchety when it comes to any sort of, yeah, you know, that's what I'm talking about. That makes sense. Not necessarily from other races, but just outsiders. They just prefer to be left alone. But they're still kind of like, you know, gnomish, so they're still kind of a little uppity. Right, but so does Caladoran have anything to do specifically with that? Um, that's a very good question. Roll a religion check. Some questions. That is intelligence based. Yeah. Nineteen. Nineteen. Um. Interestingly enough, um, from the stories you had heard from Caladoran, Caladoran actually shares quite a bit in common with the Deep Notes. Not only that, um, he shares, um. Some with also a, a deep gnome offshoot that some some also view as a dwarven offshoot of the Ordineer, um, if that, if that you're familiar with, which are the, okay. uh, those very those gray type gnomish dwarvish kind of calm. They're they're technically dwarves, but they're also like you know have a deep gnome aesthetic to them. Um, that are very gray and dark blues or dark grays and they have the capability one of their big things is what 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 they're called is it because they can fully shape stone with their hands at will like like hard hard stone can be moved like clay in their hands okay. at will it's a gift that was given to them by Caladoran himself um and the deep gnomes share i wouldn't say common ancestry but something with them not only that Caladoran, big part of his religion is that there is this thing. Um, there's also a, a, a kinship that Caladoran shares with another deity called Dumathoin. Which that was the that was what the ordinary they were Dumathoin's right. So right, so they both, which is why they're so. Like you know, intertwined, and Dumathoin is known like the known as the gem beneath the mountain, and some even believe them to just be a giant mass of crystals and gems. That's just a fear fear that's just like a, a, a cognizant, uh, conscious sphere of mess of gems that just sits beneath somewhere beneath the great mountains. So, so all of this information you recall from tales okay. and information um but so that it would make a whole lot of sense why they're working together and why like the drow and all of the underdark mm -hmm. races yeah so it's it's like um smaller followings of lesser deities kind of banded together yeah. to accomplish something greater right so all of the dark the underdark versions of the main races are mm -hmm. joining together uh, essentially, at least in this, um, from what you're understanding in this instance, that's extremely possible. Okay. Cool. Uh, I think that tunnel, what they call them, perforations, that may lead us to where we need to go. It's all the way on the other side of the city, though, isn't it? Like if the bang's pointing to it. Um. Yeah, so... So you do, you're good with blueprints and plans and mm -hmm. all that stuff and like geometry. I see the symbols. Yeah, well, yeah, the, the geometry. You see the symbols and like you got you, you've got your mental protractor out and your mental compass and you like you reanalyze it in three in a four dimensional space in your head in your mind palace and you like pull it up and you see and you see okay well if, if the fang is pointing, if they're recognizing the fang as one of the pointing of this triangle and this star, and the fang is pointing directly at the cog, then right below the cog, as far as the angle of intersection as to what would happen uh, with the uh, with the logarithmic curve uh, of where that might fall, if the fang were con to continue, its arc would end here, and you figured out like, oh shit. Not oh shit, but oh great. 
maybe the fang, if it were to continue its curve and arc along in that direction yeah. towards that cog, would fall within somewhere in the city, like an imaginary curve. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? So, like, because because the fang curves, right? Yeah. And then the tip, if it just, if an imaginary line would continue that curve, it would fall within the city. You said triangle, like the fang and the glow. So, worm. from your perspective, you see the dome, right? Like one of the domes. Like the fang is here. Yep. And you see the dome. There's a glowworm up here. It kind of hangs down. And there's a, there is the fang, and there's a big old hole that looks odd. And then. Within that triangle, oh, okay. in the center of it, there's like a, a di like some sort of defamation mark or or something that just looks too perfect of like a cog and a star kind of put together. It just looks too yeah too thick. And if you would follow um, the curve of that thing, that that gave you the hint of thinking, oh, that exactly intersects where my vision of looking at the fang would be, which gave you the idea, oh shit, if I continue the curve of the fang, that would lust, land somewhere. This is super Da Vinci, super finding patterns and things that aren't there, but Pinjack said, that's how you find these people. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, I think I know where we need to go. Okay, cool. You, um, This is all the way on the east side of the fang. Um, you work your way over the next course of like half hour or so um, across the city, uh, witnessing some more or orators. You do pass by uh, that one orator for uh, uh, for Clan goodness, for Clan Vogel. Uh, the game's over. Avalanche won. So oh, that's, that's why they're celebrating. Oh, yeah. Yes. Wonderful. <laughs> so in game is happening sports. outside of game right now. Right. Um, <laughs> Uh, Vogel is like, rock and stone our hearts are, and as firm as the throne should be, so should your determination and understanding of what Vogel could do for you. Ask not what stone were, would do if kept in their place. Ask what Vogel could do better. Uh, as you walk past them. Uh, and you eventually find your way to where you believe, like about a block or two block radius as to where you believe this might fall. I'm gonna reactivate the detect magic. Start looking for more symbology. Okay. Roll a... Um, now that you have a location, yeah. I'm gonna say roll an investigation check. So kind of like searching the premises. 29. 29. Yeah. Okay. You find... You need more. Oh. You find absolutely Dang. no magical nothing. There is nothing here. There are no signs. There are no sigils. There are no um there are no hidden like signals anywhere. Is there an outhouse? What thing what's something <laughs> that bugs you in the back of your hat in your head? <laughs> There's no outhouse. There's some what bugs you in the back of the head is that um like there's people just walking about and you go, oh pardon me. Mm. Yes, how goes the road? How go how goes the road to Thule Mormon? And then another good five minutes later, <laughs> okay. after you continue doing it, you hear another person go like, Oh, pardon me. How goes the road to Thule Mormon bed? And they continue on. And then another five or ten minutes go by. And a different individual goes, like, oh, uh, excuse my foot. Uh, how goes the road to Do you know where one might dance? You can walk up to one of these people? Because this is something you're like hearing in the back. Like, yes. You're searching. So. Okay. Excuse me. Do you know where one might... I love how they're just like, do you know? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> he talking up again. Somebody. He's talking again. He, he doesn't even agree. He doesn't even say hey. He says, he just starts talking. <laughs> Do you know where one might dance beneath the moonlight? Uh, um, this, um, hmm. half elven, a woman appeared to be anywhere between her in her 20s and her 50s because age is weird. Um, um, who appears to have, um, uh, uh, a bit of like scarring on the right side of her face. Um, says, one would dance in the moonlight in the north. 
on the snow of graceful falling flakes. As this is serious stuff. And as we as those who seek to dance in the moonlight, the cold that we feel in the bitter wind is not is of not upon the indigo. Thank you. <laughs> so nowhere here in town. My well, my brother here has lost his way. We are trying to find. So sorry, your little brother has lost his way. We are trying to find his fellow dancers. See your little brother or your older brother? Little brother. Yeah. I'm so sorry, your little brother has lost his way. Um, you will find the road. Have a good day. Thank you. Uh, where's this whole thing that you saw? It just didn't make any sense to me. It's up there. Point up on like the wall of the dome. Up, up. <laughs> There's no way. It is hundreds, it's probably maybe even thousands of feet. Oh, what? No, like hundreds and hundreds of feet. Way, 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 way. Yeah. Very, very far away. And Jack, did you understand the huge. word that lady said? Yes, yeah, been Jack. Okay. So, west of the city is where the tunnel comes in. The road comes in to the town. Yes. We were all the way over. You were on the west side. Okay. We walked all the way to the far side of the cavern. Yeah, you approached the city like on the rounded, curving thing away. Okay. So, so either there's no one here, or we need to go to the north side of town. Why are they talking about the road to Pumar Bet? I don't know. Which way did she say the moonlight was? Did she say she said you go to the north and dance, dance on snow? Yeah. The snowflakes. Mm. So do we need to look for the cold snow flake symbology in the north part of town? Um this is your brother Katie. Hey, I even I get a little confused by these things. Um um, and I'm, Why am I the one talking up? You're the one looking for your people. I, 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 I know, I know. I, you just kind of took the initiative, and I just kind of let you roll with it. I'm, I'm more of a type B, and you seem to be kind of type A. Um, so anyway, uh, I. There are times that you have to take things literally, and then there are times that you have to take things figured. extremely figurative. Okay. So. What else could it mean? If, if, if these people keep saying, you hear another one, how goes the road to Thule more bed? Another individual. Not anywhere near like the, what looks like a half orc individual that walks by. Is, are they respond? Is anyone responding to it? Yeah, like they accidentally bump into somebody. Um, at, and it's busy. So it happens. And they're like, oh, like, you know, how goes the road to Thule more bed? And they're like, oh, everything's fine. Great. You have a good day. And they're like, you have a good day too. Like it appears that or in these parts, uh, the like the greeting of like how goes the rule to throw in bed is like, hey, how's it going? Like uh, just kind of like a colloquial saying of like, what's going on? Um, although the response that you got of like, oh yes, you dance up in the north seems oddly specific, right? And like, I mean, almost like they knew immediately what you were talking. And that this kind of, that kind of bumping in and then apologizing and asking the little bit it's constantly happening in this intersection. Not constantly, like every couple five to ten minutes it right. happens. But it's it's so much so that if you weren't looking for it, you would not notice it. So um well, she said what did she say exactly? Something about the north and snow and Yes. I'd be dancing on the, the hitting blue flesh. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> a little too much beer tonight. Yes, she said you go to the north. 
dance among the snow. Okay, well let's 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 focus on the adjectives, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. It said indigo of flesh, north, flakes of snow. Well, let's let's look around, shall we then? Um, look for flakes. Look for things of an indigo of color. Look for things that are cold and bitter. Well, one with indigo flesh could speak to a drow specifically. I, I I think that's the obvious answer. I think we have to look for. We have to look for a drow in the north. Some sort of symbol of snow or cold. Maybe. Maybe or even... something to the north of us. There's some snowflake or anything of blue crystal that looks like snowflake. Sure. Or just cool. north of where we are at. So here's the deal. You guys kind of case the area. A couple things you notice. It's a bakery nearby. Um, so the, 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 yeah. the oven is fired and there's a, there's an individual that's making flour and rolling, rolling the bread. There's a, uh, what looks like a uh, an individual selling sausages and, and of indiscriminate meat. <laughs> uh, and uh, there looks to be um, a um, a couple residences here. One looks like a, a struggling general goods store that just it sells, seems to be catered to most to cloth goods and linens. Um, uh, that doesn't seem to be doing too well because a lot of people wear their trophies in their own pelts, um, but they are still, but they, uh, enough to keep themselves open. Uh, there looks to be a, let me, a, uh, on, on the opposite corner, uh, what looks, uh, like an ice, uh, shop, um, that appears to, uh, sell blocks of ice uh, and they have a stand outside in which they appear to be making like shaved ice things like treats um they're um uh, and it obviously is somewhat enchanted to keep the the ice from melting too much so um th- then the ice shop appears to be reasonably well to do because ice is expensive uh it's very expensive uh, obviously it's not as hard to keep as ice down here just because of it's on the ground and you know, we're not you're not near the magma tubes and uh, but yes uh, almost any place that sells ice has some sort of enchantment in order to keep it maintain it um there is also what looks like a uh a dwarven individual who's playing some sort of hacky sack sack kind of uh thing around here the, the, the individual is not using a hacky sack, however. It is using just the sharpened, non-shafted, um, just the metal part of a hand axe. Uh, not the shaft, just the metal part of a hand axe. And it like, mm. has like uh, metal parts on the insides of their shoes that they're hitting, making sure that the blade doesn't hit and they're just keeping it in the air. This very, very heavy thing and very, very heavy boots. Um, so you hear clink, 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 clink. I'm just kidding. Um, you think we should check at the ice place? That's the obvious look. All right, Pinjack, you're up. I'm not doing this for you now. Okay. I'm right behind you, but you know what to say better than I do. I usually mess these things up. Oh. I'll try to stay as not flamey as I can here. <laughs> okay. Um, well, one of the things you notice as you approach the the uh, ice place and Pinjack kind of walks up is that the uh, due to the the temperature differential in this place and being enchanted, um, it is caused like there are a beat of breeze that just kind of like uh, um, pull through from moving from from a, a high temperature to cold temperatures. Um, and so something that's like the temperature gets, the wind cool kind of gets pushed through here and like travels in a, like a northwesterly direction along the, uh, the edge of the corridor. And, and Pidgeot's like, um, hello? 
Um, hello, ma'am. Um, she's like, oh, what can I get you? Um, oh, your wiry little one, isn't it? Uh, would you like some shaved ice? I just got a new uh, dandelion flavor in. And he's like, um, no, that doesn't sound appetizing. Do you have any fruit flavors? Oh, well, I got some plum flavored shaved ice and some. Uh, we just got this juice in from uh, down in Sasso. Uh, some pineapple flavor. Ooh, can I have one of those? Mm -hmm. uh, sure. You guys want some? I'll throw uh, you pineapple it's, uh, shaved two ice. Two gold per, per, per person. Okay. It is expensive. It's ice. How about one gold per person? <laughs> you just push everybody away. How about one go for <laughs> I love how LP yeah. that just says, excuse me. Um, sure, roll persuasion check. I, or are you trying to be intimidating or no? Persuasive? Just okay. persuasive. Either just, way, it's still advantage. One, 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 one go. Just a little wink. Twinkle, twinkle. Yeah. <laughs> sparkle, sparkle. Did Ermgrim come with us? Ermgrim's here. He's just in his dwarf disguise. He just looks like Ermgrim. It's just his complexion's just oh, a little. Twenty five. <laughs> twenty five. Yeah, I got a net twenty plus five. Ooh. She blushes. She's like, well, <laughs> come on. And he winks at her. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, suppose it. Wouldn't be too much of a loss. <laughs> sure, I mean, I'd be a company that wouldn't give a cute customer a good deal. <laughs> we'll really appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> put my hand, hands on her shoulder again. We'll really appreciate it. Get out. Okay. <laughs> I'll stack the gold on the counter for her. Okay, you got it. Um, the, the pineapple is a little bitter. Hmm. It's, it's 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 sweet. It's tart. It's sour. It's got that nice pineapple flavor to it. But it's a it's a little bitter. It's almost, traveled a long way. Yeah. So. It's almost like it. It kind of got that uh, that almost uh, sparkling water flavor, like carbonation. But when you know, like Ferment the fruit carbonate. is starting to ferment and everything, but it still tastes good. It's just probably got that little bitter fermenting. It's at the very end. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which <laughs> it's kind of interesting, actually. Um, but yeah. You know, we were in Sasso just a couple months ago. Thank you. Thank Bringing me back then. My pleasure. Seven. Nudge, Pinjack. <laughs> oh. He's like, got, he's, you nudge him and he drops his ice. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to try it. Oh, oh my god. Oh, holy cow. <laughs> That's funny. I mean, thanks, Boots. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, Gloves. Gray gloves. <laughs> yes, he's still not wearing them. Yeah, I know he's still not wearing gloves. I mean, I have the sparkle glove, but it's too big for you. Oh, he wanted it. Yeah, we, we offered it. And I told him, him oh, he hurt. hurt. I know, oh, okay. but, but it's a human size. It's, it's okay. a little too big for him. Well, so should not to make two. <laughs> I want to try this one. Wait, what? Speak up. Thank you. Why are we here? <laughs> this little fool wants to go dance in the moonlight. Ma'am, my little brother is lost. I'm lost. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a full grown man doing this. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, but he's a gnome, too, so he yeah. can get away with that. Do you know. Stare at first. Jesus. <laughs> Working the dance. <laughs> um, do you know where one can find some moonlight in the city? Do you know where one could find some moonlight in the city? 
In my quarters, seven thirty. In my court, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> I almost forgot my accent. <laughs> Cluster. Oh, you do knock me off kilter again. I should be in. Could find a, a, maybe a ray of moonlight between some sheets like that. Okay. <laughs> Would you like another? No, thank you. Hey. Do you like another? No, thank you, but do you know where we could... <laughs> where you can find me by the dance to yeah. you. Among the snowflakes. Dance? Mm -hmm. Well... If you want to go dancing, we could find a nearby. I don't think she knows anything that's going to there. You know that you're just not giving the right. Do you use Spark? Spark. Spark. How's the Spark? How do you do? It's cocoa butter. <laughs> <laughs> she like pulls out a little ledger. <laughs> Looking around the shop, is there anything icon? Any symbols? Log, what am icons? I doing? But the, one of the things you are oh, noticing here, is that <laughs> the bitter flavor of the, the the pineapple is kind of catching on that temperature differential wind blowing in the north and west, western direction, creating a cold, bitter wind. Cold oh, wind? Yes. I think we need to go this way. Thank you for your help. We'll see where the wind blows. And us. the treat. Um, you end up by the baker, who um, picks up uh, one of the uh, pieces of dough and slaps it on uh, the the table, releasing like a cloud of flour that then sprinkles down. Um, uh, and he continues kneading it. It looks like a human individual, well into their fifties. Just kneading bread, kind of um, what looks like uh, outside in a little bit more of a damper area so that they remain. Um, and it looks like there's a couple fires nearby, that, um, of which, like, the flowers being caught on and being lifted up into the air um, uh, that kind of keep the temperature warm enough for the bread to rise. Sir Baker. Can I have a moment of your time? He starts meeting and then stops and wipes his hands on his um, his apron. He's like, So Baker was my father. You can just call me Baker Jr. Baker Jr.? <laughs> we were blind I here. I jest, my name's By the cold and bitter wind. My little brother here is lost. We are looking for a place where he can dance. In the oh. Do you know of such a place? You know, me and my wife used to go dancing before she passed. I remember it till like it was yesterday. He starts reminiscing. We used to split plum wine. <laughs> I would always spill it, clumsy me. Right on my white trousers. Make such a mess. Could never get those spots out. I'm sorry, he got me lost in the memory. Ah. But, um... Oh, there's a few taverns nearby if you're looking to dance. Which was your favorite to dance with your wife? Oh. We wouldn't dance in a tavern. We'd go off by ourselves. See if we could find an underground river somewhere. Set up a picnic. 
I would always try to wash my stained trousers in the river, but they would just come out this faded shade of purple. Indigo, you might say. Maybe. We got rid of them a while back, though. Actually, uh, if you're still looking for a pair of pants, they're in the, um, just about to throw them out. They're in the uh, wash over there, the bin, if you're looking for them. Perhaps they can be as much of a good luck charm for you as it was for me. Maybe they even be your dancing pants. I'm sure they will bring us good luck. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> or Baker. Would you like some bread? Fortunately, we purchased quite a lot of it earlier. <laughs> it's just as well. Pretty backed up from all those orders from Vogel anyway. That is the is that your bread? They pretty much subsidized quite a few of the bakers in the city. I have a whole bag of your bread then. I pull out one of the loaves. That's not mine, but that's probably another baker's has also been uh, you know, sequestered by uh been contracted by Vogel. Or, you know, a lot of people that that Vogel hired. Quite the Hubbub. They seem it's less. First time I've ever seen something like this. It's like some sort of campaign. They seem less friendly to those outside. Well, well, you're in a city that lives right next to the breach. I want to be welcoming, but you know, you got an empty tummy and you've got some coin in your purse. Be more than willing to have you in my establishment. Go take a look at those pants. Thank you, Baker Jr. My, my name's not Archie. <laughs> uh, cool. So you go over to his, like, crashed laundry hamper that is outside of hanging on a clothesline. Um, the, there are... A pair of white pants. There's a pair of white pants, which have, like, kind of a gradation of indigo purple plum wine stain on them and as you kind of like reach down and look for them you notice that like as you like bump into the large not wicker but like you know those flat wood pieces of woven uh basket big 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 basket um you know as you bump into it you notice that this thing moves and it shouldn't move for how much like you know damp clothes are it. okay. it's far too light He's talking about losing his wife a long time ago and still has these pants. Can I tilt it up? She's over there crying. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tilt the basket you, up? You tilt it up, um, and it's a false bottom. There's only like about like five paint pairs of laundry on the top, that, and then which is then has like a piece of plywood, and then hmm. under it what looks like a a cellar door. Like, there's a hole in the bottom of the basket. Are we, like, behind the bakery? Yeah, you're, like, behind his stall. Okay. So we're not, like, out in the open. No. Okay. I think we know where we need to go. Mm-hmm. Do you guys want to hang out out here, or do you want to all pile down into it's the hole? Like, the bitter wind. The snowflakes. Yes, Pinjack. <laughs> Good job, bud. <laughs> An underground river. Exactly. Where he danced. Because it's, because it's draining the wet clothes. Should we all go down? Or do you think... be so sarcastic about it. I'm not. <laughs> is this a point where you need to go on your own? Um. If this is an entrance to... Your place. I don't want to get you in trouble. Well, by having. Do you are you still interested in possibly working for them? For it seems like our goals are aligned. May not be the exact about, outcome they were out hoping for, but how about it's just you and I, since we're family? I mean, you seemed like you might get in a bit of trouble last time. 
bringing me with you. So I just want to make sure. Screw that. You're my family. You okay. saved my life, and you weren't for you. They wouldn't have gotten this information, so they can suck it. You gotta <laughs> keep an eye out around here. How are you gonna let us know if you're in trouble? Alright. I'll scream really loud. Is Conk <laughs> coming down with you? No. <laughs> okay, so in the interest of time, you find your way down. You go down the steps. Um into the darkness, and before you is another iron-banded door that has no handle. Um, there is... doesn't appear there's any way to open it at all. Um, there is no light down here. Pinjax, well... Did they teach you a knock or anything? And then, whoa! And then the floor just falls out from both of you <laughs> under you, and you fall down into a slide and end up in a chamber surrounded by a bunch of individuals with lanterns of in glow worms on them. Uh, there's look like there's many, several, several drow here. There's quite a few gnomes here, humans, tieflings. Um, they all, um, there are several drow <laughs> in moon heraldry. Um, dressed in very, um, I don't want to say athletic, I want to say, like, full-on battle gun, like, full-on battle attire. Okay. And, and they all immediately point large bastard swords, like all... paladins. In, kind of, yeah. But not, like, plate, like, movable, like, fabric okay. that is so thick, though, uh, um, and so and tied so tight to their body that it acts like impact padding, um, and like a good four to six bastard swords are all pointed like right at your throats as you're now on your butts, uh, sitting there. Hey, this is improvement from last time. Well, These ones are looks like we found it. So, state your business. Who are you? Why are you here? And why did you interrupt my tea time? As an individual of old, deep gnome persuasion walks up, holding an upside-down mushroom with steaming liquid coming out of it. Um, and uh, 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 it doesn't look like a hat. It looks like a full-on, like, a fly amanita mushroom is just growing out of his hair. Um, Terribly rude of me to interrupt your tea. You had a group of people in the city of Minheim, of which my younger brother was helping, looking for a certain idol. That group is no more. He looks to one of, uh, a... Um half elf and half drow individual kind of like um like Sofka the same persuasion as Sofka except without um uh the vitiligo just kind of uh uh just a darker complexion and it looks how of it and they will through my and my group's timely intervention my brother survived we were too late to help the rest of them We also were able to retrieve what you were looking for, but it was then taken. And I will press the digitate a small little illusion of the Loth statue. Do you know of the blind ones? Just a moment. Takes his tea and um, this little, uh, what looks like was a pauldron, kind of peels off his shoulder and is, is a little mimic that's been attached to his shoulder. That uh, he just feeds the rest of his tea and then and then eats the mushroom as from the as the cup, the mushroom cup. Pull my little egg out. I got one of those too. And put it back. Away. A moment. <laughs> and he just confers with the uh, half open individual and. It's my favorite thing. 
Do you have those amulets? Yes, yes. But there's weekly. That's right. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, it will look so like we, we took care of them. Yeah. Um, you see him like reach into his bag and the bastard sword gets a lot closer. He's like, hey, um, everything's okay. It's just, I'm just proof of it real slow. <laughs> These are the amulets of my fellow compatriots that I was able to collect after they were murdered brutally. <laughs> and they're like, oh. and they look back and, and the old deep gnomes, their swords down. You bring us terrible news, and it's what we feared. The worst. You say you lost the item that was in the possession. They knew you sought it out. And of the moon dancer? Perished. As I said, we were with my brother searching the idol when we returned. No one still breathed. Hmm. We might have an alternate <laughs> path for you to achieve your goals. I'm sorry, the moon ray. Um. Okay. So, you said your younger brother here is one of ours, but you are not. No. So then why are you here? As a traveling mercenary, our paths crossed in Mindheim. You share blood. Fortuitously enough, just in time to save his life. I must think on this. However, that means that we have assassins after, don't we? Were you followed? Did you bring them here? If they were after us, I would not have made it this far. Hmm. All right. He uh, looks up to the half an individual. I want you to debrief the younger one, the younger brother. You, sir, know too much and also far too little. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> Leave before I look. Accurate description of Zemdak I've ever heard. <laughs> As I said, we might have an alternate route forward for you. We managed to rescue the Midnight Air. Midnight Air? And he has accompanied us. Not familiar. Hermgrim. Sorry, it doesn't ring a bell. The Air of Grimdemar? <laughs> You mean one of the Turnabar cities? Yes. I was that he either here nor there. He has the same goals as your moon ray did. Oh. Wait, are you proposing an alliance? Yes. Looks at the moon ray, moon, sorry, moon ray looks back. We must confer and debrief your brother. In the meantime, you are to stay within the city limits, and you will have a, a, a chaperone. Make sure your movements are... We're at the Quarry's Qualm? Oh, I'll always know where you are. And he pulls his, peels his pauldron off and just passes it to your shoulder. Another I pull out the, the spore egg and I shake it at him. What? What's happening? I thought we were trading mushrooms. I apologize. Oh my god. <laughs> I misunderstood the custom. I apologize. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we're going to end the episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh.
<laughs> he released I can't believe you released Arkelion. That's why I'm like, oh my god. Really? Really? Oh, oh yes, biomass. Yeah. <laughs> I thought we were likewise. trading mushrooms. <laughs> it's the only mushroom. Okay, that's where we're gonna end. Um, and that's where we'll end this session, guys. Thank you so much for sticking around. Um, uh, stay tuned. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and all follow and all that jazz. And stay tuned for our Patreon. It'll go live hopefully sometime soon in the coming days, weeks. Uh, and as always, stay safe out there. Bye! Bye! Bye. Check out the bird eggs! <laughs>